What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel and I appreciate you being here. Today we're going to go over the latest weekly update by Bungie and they talk about big changes coming. So let's get into it. This week at Bungie we're decorating the world for the big dance. Yesterday we revealed that Crimson Days is coming to Destiny 2. If you haven't had a chance to read through the details about the new 2v2 playlist and the rewards you can earn in any activity, please check it out now. We'd be honoured to have you join us for the celebration. Earlier this week, Lord Saladin packed up his wares and left the tower. We heard some good things about the Iron Banner in Season 2. If you are still holding tokens, you can use them next time the ritual returns. If you still need to punch some Guidance to get that chest ornament, you can also continue your progress when Lord Saladin returns. Set all the score. Do you see the stars flutter? Now listen, they scream from the lacerations of our enemies. The balance has been threatened. Nightfall is upon us. This burden of light has never been heavier. We can sleep no more. Yulin Tan. Last week we published a Destiny 2 development roadmap to forecast some changes coming to Destiny 2. You may have noticed some changes coming to Nightfall Strikes. The Nightfall has been the subject of a lot of feedback since the launch. Many of you felt that the timer was pretty stressful and preferred being able to slowly work your way through challenges at your own pace. We plan to address this feedback with upcoming changes. Before we get into the details, Game Director Christopher Barrett has some context to frame up the essential fantasy that we'd like the Nightfall to serve. Barrett Nightfall should be a challenging test that only the bravest guardians dare face. Fire teams of any size should be able to participate. From organised clan groups to skilled solo players, players should be able to determine their own challenge level by going slow and steady or fast and wild. With elective modifiers to test the most hardcore veterans, your final score will separate the best from the rest and with high risk comes high reward. Each terrible villain that players face should have a very rare and powerful unique item themed to them that tumbles to the ground as they collapse into a pile of bones. Concrete Nightfall should be a badge of honour with the best players able to show off their achievements with new dynamic emblems and exclusive auras. That's the vision of where we want to take the Nightfall. You will be seeing the first of this direction in the next patch with more being added over time. With those goals in mind, we asked designer John Favaro and senior design lead Tyson Green to share some facts on how they plan to enhance Nightfall Strikes. Tyson, we are working on new sandbox improvements. We recognise the need for a venue in which those improvements matter more. The weekly Nightfall, especially on the prestige difficulty, was intended to be such a venue, but the controversial time limit mechanic is a simple pass-fail mechanism. It only acknowledges success as being clear with no degrees of success past that. So no competition exists in that space. It turns a lot of people off of Nightfall 2, since it is both difficult and indexes performance solely on speed. Nightfall scoring. We are repositioning strike scoring in Destiny 2 to enable you to achieve something prestigious in the weekly Nightfall and as a way to amplify difficulty. The new scoring rules are intended to be better at a few specific things. Reward you for engaging and defeating enemies instead of running past them. Avoid overemphasizing specific mechanics like precision kills that highlight certain areas of the sandbox and or punish other areas so that players are the ones who determine the most effective meta. Reward you for taking on greater challenges up to the limits of your own capabilities. Reward you for doing the above quickly and over the course of a short run versus long slugs of several hours. The update mechanics look like this. Scoring is team based and the sum of individual performances. A team should be able to focus on what works best, not feeling put out by who stole whose kill. Scoring is primarily driven by kills and secondarily by orb generation. We want you to find what works best for clearing strikes instead of telling you which weapons to use. But we want coordinated use of supers and other team support mechanics to contribute to high scores. We're interested in restoring special point awards based on medals, but we want your input to understand the basic meta first. 
Score bleeds over time. We are watching this closely. Score decay can feel bad. But are all else being equal, a team that clears faster than another team should score higher. Score decay achieves this in the most transparent fashion. Scoring cuts off after time thresholds. At 15 minutes, new points earned are reduced by 50%. At 18 minutes, you stop earning new points and it's a race to finish and post your score. We want time to matter, but we also want to avoid some of the problems we saw with Prison of Elders where a high school might involve punishing respawning combatants and yourself for a few hours until the novelty wore off. A good nightfall clear shouldn't feel like a slug. Challenge. On top of the above mechanics are challenge cards, items that offer ways to boost the challenge in exchange for score multipliers. In 1.1.3 there will be a challenge card that drops from completing a nightfall run. It has some customization options to help tune the challenge level to what you and your fire team are capable of. Rewards. Players will be able to see their and your scores on new Nightfall emblems available as drops in each Nightfall strike. These emblems and others like them are now the sources of auras which are automatically enabled if your personal score is above a global threshold. At first the threshold will be set based on what we think might be tough for players to reach but we look forward to you showing us how much we underestimated you. Then we can raise the bar based on community scores. Along with the aura, a personal score over the threshold will also unlock a fireteam wide buff that boosts vanguard token drops in that strike by 25%. When your fireteam sees a nightfall aura on your head, they know who's hooking them up. Lastly, some rare variants of these nightfall emblems will be available as drops at higher score thresholds. Obtaining these rewards is meant to be challenging, so we don't expect everyone to reach these scores or collect these items. Now that I absolutely love the sound of. I mean, away Destiny 2 basically dropped, it was made for the casual player. It was too easy, way, way too easy. Things like these, I hope they bring more of in the future. An actual challenge, which they don't expect everyone to complete. That is the Bungie I remember from Destiny 1. Okay, version 0.9, update 1.1.3 will have a first pass on this feature. Before we can call it a competitive activity, we need your help pushing the limits and finding where it breaks. Future updates will react to your input as well as add more rewards and recognition to posting competitive scores. We also hope to extend the challenge cards to support more difficulty customization and deepen the scoring options. All of the feedback you give us in this release will go into making our upcoming releases better. Thank you in advance. Designer John Favero has some additional info what you can expect from the new Nightfall modifiers in the Prestige mode. Quoting John right here, the current Nightfall climate encourages play that pushes players through the encounters as fast as possible, focusing on extending bonus timers and skipping encounters unless they are required, which was more stressful than fun. With Nightfall strikes growing, we were looking to give players a little more control, allowing them to modify their experiences to provide them the challenge they want and incentivize more methodical progression through the activities. People like big numbers and the best way to get big numbers is to kill everything. We've been listening to the community's feedback and this is our first step in making a few improvements. We're hoping you'll put some time in and let us know how you feel. The modifiers will apply a multiplier to your score in the Prestige Nightfall. It isn't all more 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 though. There are plenty of ways to lose points. There is an ever present score bleed to apply pressure to keep you moving and a timer that will reduce your multiplayer if you take too long. Here are the current modifiers we're going to ship in this first iteration. Void Solar Arc Singe currently provides a plus 25% increase to player and enemy damage of the corresponding element. Extinguish Fighting Wipes return the team to orbit. That is old school. Power modifier, voluntarily decrease your power to gain a score bonus. Sound pretty cool to be honest. These are our initial modifier offerings. This release is focusing more on how the system as a whole feels, so we can get feedback on the core experience to fine tune it before we dive in headfirst to create additional modifiers. There you have it, if you still enjoy the thrill of racing through quickly, you will be rewarded with a higher score. If you prefer to go in solo and take your time, you might lose some points, but we'll still finish the activity and collect a reward. You can complete the normal nightfall and get a score. 
or you can take on the prestige nightfall and ratchet up your score with some modifiers we're eager to see you jump into the new nightfall and give us feedback on these changes so looking good nightfall wise it really is now they're going to talk about raid plans so let's get into it another thing that may have jumped out at you as you read through the destiny 2 development roadmap was that the eater of worlds prestige mode was pushed out until may you may have even said what is taking them so long i think we all did to be honest it's a fair question the answer is that we didn't want to release it in its current form before rolling it out we thought we could add some more flavor to this special activity that will make it worth the wait here to tell you more about our plans for raid activities is senior designer joe blackburn Hey Guardians, for Destiny 2 we wanted to release uh, raid content on a more regular cadence than we did during the first years of Destiny. In our original estimation of this work, we knew we would have to focus on normal modes, foregoing layer challenge modes and having their prestige modes rely on enemies that are more lethal and hard to kill. As we get closer to releasing Prestige Eater of Worlds, we knew we wanted to do something more. Over the past few months, we have been prototyping a new way of adding difficulty and replayability to raid activities. Today, I am happy to announce that we have decided to push this feature forward and release it for all the Leviathan raid content with the release of Expansion 2. Going forward, all raids will have a normal mode active at all times, and each week, one raid or raid layer will have a created loadout mode. This new version of Prestige requires players to complete raids filled with deadly enemies using a curated loadout of weapons and a special modifier that enhances the way you play. The raid team never likes to let you know exactly what to expect, but let's look at some hypothetical examples. These are not the plan of record, but they give you a basic idea of what you might find. Week 1 Raid activity, eat with worlds, modifier, marksman, precision damage is increased, landing a precision shot grants one ammo directly to the magazine, required loadout, kinetic hand cannon, energy scout rifle and power linear fusion. Week 2, raid activity will be expansion to raid layer, modifier, gladiator, your melee damage is increased and melee kills grant bonus super, loadout, kinetic sidearm, energy submachine gun and power weapon shotgun week three raid activity will be the eater of worlds modifier conduit each kill you get before reloading or swapping weapons gives you increasingly more ability energy required loadout kinetic also rifle energy risk runner and power weapon grenade launcher we should also note that while the eater of worlds is not getting any specific encounter changes all the previous prestige changes in Leviathan will be active when players engage in its new loadout difficulty. The goal of the new prestige mode is simple, provide new ways to engage with raid content each week, new ways to engage with different weapons in your vault and new rewards to chase. This is currently slotted on the roadmap for May, but this is a major overhaul and could be pushed out further. We'll keep you updated. We can't wait for you to play it, talk about it and help us make it better for years to come. Thanks, Joe. And those are the changes coming to the raid. Now, all does sound good. I do love the idea of uh, raid modifiers, making it more of a challenge, making it more fun to play. The one problem I do have is the fact that they mentioned it could be stretched out even further. So we may not be even getting this in May. That kind of is uh, something to worry about. If they're talking about how it might be delayed a little, expect it to probably be delayed but hey i've said this from day one if it takes time for them to make a better change that is fine by me as long as we've got other content to play in the meantime but yes guys that's basically it for this weekly update they're going to talk about other changes uh which we got from last week's patch if you do want to check it out i'll link the whole update within the video description but guys uh, let me know what you think about the changes coming to Nightfalls and the raid. If you enjoyed the video, leaving a like really does help me out. Thanks as always for stopping by and hopefully people will see you on that next one.